All right, I'm going to try this again. Uh, since I just tied up this beautiful little PMX for you and sat here and talked to myself um, for about half an hour um, and then found out that I only recorded half of the video, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start from the beginning um, this time for you and we'll just, we'll just see how that goes. Um, so with that, um, this is a PMX, which stands for Parachute Madam X. Uh, Madam X is an old Doug Swisher pattern and uh, the original had sort of a bullet head uh, elk hair wing and rubber legs um, and has sort of morphed into, um, you know, for lack of a better term, sort of a parachute stimulator. Um, this is a cool fly. Um, it's complicated. It's, it's a little tricky as far as how to, how to tie this thing um, for a variety of reasons. And uh, um, I have to say I tied a dozen or so just kind of getting warmed up uh, just to kind of figure out the best way to go about it. Uh, so I'm going to show you what I what I came up with, whether that's the best way or just my best way is uh, you know, a little open to interpretation, but um, I'm going to show you how I did it. Um, this uh, is a cool little attractor fly and it also works well for those kind of mid-sized summer stone flies. Um, that small uh, brown stone, um, I know this is a royal version, but uh, they eat this pretty well for that. I fished this with John Flick down on the Rio Grande uh, and they did eat it pretty good this summer. Uh, John Flick from Deranglers, of course, uh, the OG of OGs, uh, one of my favorite people in this industry. But anyway, uh, we're going to tie a PMX. So I'm going to take this one out, and I'm going to put, where did my hook go? It's right here. I'm going to put a new hook in here. This is a TMCO 5262, size 12. Um, and that's a 2X long, 2 extra heavy nymph hook. Um, and the reason I tie, there's a couple reasons I tie it on, on this. Um, one, I like that heavier hook. It always makes the fly, because the bend is heavier, it makes the fly land right side up every time. Uh, you don't have to twitch it to, to get it to line up. Um, a TMCO 5212 is the equivalent of this hook, but in a one extra fine wire. Um, and that'd be totally okay. But I always have the anticipation that I'm going to catch a giant fish, so I like a little bit heavier wire hook. The third reason that I'm using this hook is because this is what was sitting on my desk. So, uh, I'm going to... I'm going to use this one. So 52, 62, size 12. Um, the thread I'm going to use is some 72 denier. This doesn't even have a label on it yet, other than my friend Stephen Hankins writing on it. Um, this is from Mayfly Material, or I'm sorry, uh, gosh, not Mayfly Materials. We use it to tie Mayflies. Um, this is from Magpie Materials, who is Stephen Hankins from uh, Oklahoma, and he has got some, some fantastic new material. He's... Uh, uh, sort of curating some little uh, uh, bespoke material lines that he's doing himself, uh, you know, relatively limited quantities. Um, he's got spectacular beaver dubbing with just no guard hairs in it at all, um, possum dubbing, um, wild turkey biots that he dyes himself, and uh, now he's added thread to his mix. And this thread um, is a polyester thread. It's 72 denier, so it's about dot uni sized. Um, um, the denier is a much better better unit of measurement for this, um, but it's a, uh, a very low stretch, very flat <clears throat> polyester thread, and uh, so far I've got a spool of brown, so I'm going to use brown on this one. You could use black also, um, but so far I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of his thread, so I'm going to start this thread just up behind the hook eye here. I'm going to make a thread base all the way back to the bend. When I get back there, I'm going to come all the way back up to the hook eye again, just with a nice, smooth, even base. And you can see how, th how flat that thread lays. It's really nice for this kind of stuff. And then I'm going to back that thread up about three eye lengths back from the hook eye. And for the wing, I'm going to use some white polypropylene macrame yarn. Um, and I've brushed this out. And I want a pretty good sized chunk. Um, I want a nice thick wing on this fly. So I'm going to start off with a clump about yay big. Um, and I want to pull any of those shorter fibers out of that clump. And I always cut the end so that it's square, like so. And I don't need a very long length. I'll probably trim this down after the fact. But I'm going to start off by tying this down at the center of its length, um, just with two turns that are stacked one on top of the other. And then I'm going to rotate the material. Um, so let me turn this. To make those wraps at an angle, and I'll wrap two wraps the other direction, so front to back. Catch a couple crazies in there. 
to create basically spinner wings. This is the start of our parachute post. Um, in the case of this big bushy fly, I'm going to go a few more X wraps each direction. Um, if you have trouble with your parachute post flip flopping as you go to wrap your hackle later, um, it's because those X wraps in between the wings weren't tight to start with. Um, so I'm going to anchor that in, then I'm going to pull the two wings up, and I'm going to bring the thread around the base just a few times, two, three turns, just to sort of group that together nice and tight, like so. Um, now one thing I've been doing as I've been playing with this fly, I'm going to take a little dubbing wax and put it on my fingers. Um, and then I'm going to roll this wing up. And that'll just kind of gather that wing so I don't have to contend with the loose fibers during the rest of the process. <clears throat> now I'm going to back my thread all the way back up to the bend. When I get here, I'm going to take some yearling elk and I'm going to cut off a little clump here. Starting off about yay big. And I want to clean that out, get all that all that under fur out, all that short hair and under fur, I want to clean that out. Straighten that hair a bit. And then I'll put it tips down in my hair stacker. Just give it a few wraps. And then once I've got it stacked, I've got a little better idea of how much hair I've got. Like so. Get that up there where you can see it. Now I'm going to measure that clump of hair. It's about a half a shank, maybe just a little short of a half a shank. <clears throat> I'm going to spin my thread up and I'm going to lay this hair in back here at the bend and put two turns around it and then I'm going to flare that hair. Um, and being yearling elk fairly close to the tips, it's not going to flare a ton, um, but I want to make sure that I anchor it down and compress all that hair as I make a little band of thread right there, like so. So I've just got a short little bush for a tail. And then I'm going to lift all these butt ends up. And I'll bring the thread <clears throat> right up behind the wing. And then I'm going to bring it just in front of the wing um, to about an eye length back from the hook eye. At this point, I'm going to take this hair and divide it in half. I want half on the far side and half on the near side of the wing. like so. And what I'm essentially doing here is I'm going to use um, this elk hair to sort of form an underbody for the fly all the way up uh, to the to the hook eye or the index point. Um, a little burr on my finger right there. So that I have an even diameter body all the way around the hook. And you can see that just sort of encapsulates the hook. And I'll anchor that down good and tight. Then I'm going to come in with the very tips of my scissors at a right angle. And I'm going to cut those butt ends off as close as I can get them. You can see I'm doing this in multiple steps all the way around the hook. Those butt ends go all the way around, so your cut needs to go all the way around as well. You can see on the monitor we've got one crazy one there. Um, then I'm going to clean those butt ends up a bit. And then I'll start to wrap back to the bend again. And you can see I'm not compressing all that hair on this trip. I've got plenty of chance to do that. Um, but what I've just done is made an even underbody to build this fly on. Um, if you don't do this, if you just tie the, the butt ends of the tail off behind the wing, what you end up with is sort of a skinny thorax, um, you know, fat back end and then a skinny thorax. And we want to try to keep things as even as we can. So um, that's why I've gone about that that way. Um, so now for the, for the body, we're going to do the Royal uh, PMX. So I'm going to take three or four strands of peacock curl. And cut the ends off so that they're all square. I just took these off with an eyed quill. And I'm going to tie these in at the bend. And I'm going to begin to, begin to wrap these back here at the bend. And I want to wrap to just in front of the hook point. And then tie them off or four turns, trim those butt ends out, and then I'm going to come forward. And at this point, I'm going to start to smooth down that elk hair underbody, um, right up to the base of the wing, really. Um, you can even kind of jump back and forth. We're just compressing that hair, but we want a nice smooth underbody. Um, and this is where we're going to put our floss in. So what I've got for the, for the sash 
is some unifloss in red, um, and this is a, just a single strand uh, red floss. And I'm going to cut a, a piece, this piece is probably six or eight inches long, uh, it's enough for a couple flies. I'm going to tie this in at the front end, just behind the wing, and I want to anchor it down good and tight. Now as I start to wrap this, I'm going to bring it over the far side of the hook, and if you look close here, you can see it's sort of, uh, kind of starting to come apart and fraying out a little bit. If I unwind it a bit and sort of stroke down, you can see how I can tighten those fibers up. That looks pretty good there. That's showing really well. Um, see how that flattens out like a ribbon? That's going to make for a much smoother body. So once I kind of get that flattened, then I can start to wrap. And you can see I can kind of continue to do that. You'll get a loose strand here and there, um, but by stroking that, you'll, you'll keep those, those pieces aligned. And I want to wrap back over them, making a layer all the way back to the front edge of that peacock and then coming forward again. And as I get up close to the front here, you can see it'll start to spread out a little bit. Um, not a huge deal because I'm going to cover that um, with my wing tie down and the next bunch of peacock. So I'll tie that off and clip that extra out of there. And now we're ready, <clears throat> ready for our wing. So our down wing on this fly is more yearling elk. So I'm going to take a, a little bit bigger clump than we'd use for the tail. But I'm going to clean it out the same way. All that under fur out. You can use cow elk for this also, especially in bigger sizes. Um, I actually tied several of them with cow elk this morning and it worked fine. Yearling compresses a little bit, a little bit easier on the smaller sizes for sure. Just a slightly finer hair. I'll get that stacked up nice and clean. And I'm going to take this clump of hair once I've got it out of the stacker, and I'm going to measure it against the hook. And where I want to measure from is really just right behind the base of the wing, um, back to the tip of the tail. So I'm going to get that measurement, and I'm using my thumbnail. You can just barely see my thumbnail right in here. i use my thumbnail to kind of roll up to that length. And then I'll butt my fingers together, and I'm going to cut that hair off at that length. And I want to try to get a nice square cut, like so. So now I'm going to spin my thread up a bit. I can tilt that wing forward. I'm going to lay that hair in right up against the base of the wing. I'm going to put two turns around it, and then I'll flare that hair in place. Oh, see, I broke my thread. Okay, not a big deal. Um, you can see that hair's not going anywhere. I'm going to rethread my bobbin real quick. Put the thread right back through that same notch. And then I can trim those two tag ends out. Now, go on just like it never happened. What I'm going to do here is just start, start to anchor down those butt ends. And I don't need them covered completely, but I do want to smooth them out a bit. Make sure our wing's still all up on top. We pushed a few around there. I think we're okay. I don't like that one right there. Well, that wasn't a very accurate cut. There we go. Like so. Now, one of the catches on this fly uh, when you go to, to tie this is um, we're going to wrap a parachute hackle around this white wing. Um, and the hair wing here is completely 100% in the way. Um, so the trick that I've come up with over the years for uh, solving this problem in this situation is I'm going to take some lead wire. This is a, a spool of 025. really doesn't matter what size you use, though. Um, any, any size will work. Um, and I'm going to take, you know, an inch and a half or so long piece of lead wire. <clears throat> and I'm going to put this in between the two wings and just make a little coil here. And that'll hold that wing down out of the way. So now that's going to clear our path for the rest of the process so we don't have to fight with that wing being in our way. Now I'm going to take my hackle. And in the case of our fly here, um, if I measured this, this is a, you know, this is maybe even a little oversized, about a size 10 hackle. Um, I see PMX is tied on the internet a lot, and, and they've invariably got, um, and I, I understand why, um, they, they've got a hackle that's too small. Um, and it's because most hackles are 
too small for a size 12 parachute particularly. Um, you need a, uh, I'm not going to say a special saddle, but this is a Hebert saddle. Um, this is a Whiting Hebert uh, natural furnace, um, you know, regular brown will work, um, saddle feather. And it's just bigger sized. So you want an appropriately sized feather. Like I say, this is, this is probably closer to a size 10 than a 12, but this is going to work nicely on this slide. Um, and what I've done is I've stripped about a half a shank worth of bare stem, maybe not quite half a shank. Um, and what I want to do here is I want to tie this in with the inside of the feather toward the hook, just in front of the wing. And I want to anchor it down good and tight there. And then I'm going to stand it up against the far side of the wing. Um, and you can see how high up that bare stem comes, right up to here. Okay. Um, this feather's a little longer than I need. I'm going to trim it just a little shorter so it doesn't dangle back down in my way. And now what I'll do is I'm going to post that feather, that stem, to my wing post. And you can see I can kind of twist those two together. But I want to make a fairly tall wing post. And the reason for this is this hackle's got to sit up above that peacock curl uh, that we're about to wrap in the thorax. And if you make a short post, your peacock curl sort of crawls up it um, and doesn't give you much room to actually wrap your hackle. So I'm going to make a tall post. Um, and you can see there's, you know, on the parachute atoms and other videos I've done, um, there's more tricks on how to do this. But if I reel this in a little bit, you can see my bobbin tube is inverted. I've just turned my bobbin upside down. I like to feed out a little bit more thread. Um, and I can work up to the top of the post and then back down again. And make a nice smooth thread post to wrap my hackle on. And you can see I've got just a little bit of bare stem beyond that tie down. That'll keep us from having hackle fibers that stick up where they're not supposed to be. Um, now this feather's going to fight with my camera a little bit, so I'm going to wind him up in the wing just so he stays up out of the way. <clears throat> and at this point, I'm going to tie in um, four more strands of peacock curl. So I'm going to get four here, give them about even, and then I'm going to trim the ends off so that they're square. And I'm going to tie these in right at the base of the wing. I'll just draw those down to length. And I've tied those just in on my near side here. And the last piece we're going to add to this is a couple of rubber legs, um, thus, thus making the X pattern for the Madam X. And I'm going to use uh, fine brown rubber legs. Um, and I've got a couple pieces here. I'm going to take the first one and lay it in along my near side and catch it right at the base of the wing with a couple turns. And then I can kind of position it right square to the side of the hook that there so you can see it. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the far side. And you really don't have to worry exactly where you catch this. Just get it caught. Get that back around your side. Um, you can see how that one's a little high. Once I've got a couple turns on there, I can sort of maneuver that and position it right where I want it to be, which is right along in line with the side of the hook. Now I'm going to sweep those front legs back, and bring my thread forward, couple turns right up to the base of the wing, and then right up to the hook eye. Now at this point, it's not a bad idea to add a little shot of, <clears throat> a little shot of super glue to the wing post. Um, so I'm going to take, I'm try to do this without making too big a mess. Um, I want a very thin, very small drop of thin super glue. And I'm just going to put that on the post. You can see that'll bleed right in there. Um, that just anchors things up. You do want to make sure that your post is straight before you do that because it won't bend anymore. Now I'm going to pick up my four strands of, of hurl. And I'm going to make a turn or two. Well, in this case, just one turn will fill that space in between the legs. Then I'm going to pull this near leg back, pull the far leg back, and put a wrap between it and the wing. Let's see, I've caught one strand there. Now I'm going to cross, make another turn in front, and come up on the bottom and tie that off just behind the hook eye. A couple turns there to anchor that down. Now I've got my material spring back here on my vise. I could drape my thread in that so that's not going to go anywhere while I come in and trim this out.
wet my fingers just a little bit, and I want to just clean up that thread head area a bit. And then I'm going to bring my thread up and back around the base of the wing. Okay, um, I usually try to drop it in between the legs, and you can see it'll pull down that far leg. Um, so now what I've got is the thread going around the base of the wing, and in my case, tying left-handed, that's a clockwise turn. If you're tying, tying right-handed, uh, it should go counterclockwise. So now I'm going to grab my rotary hackle pliers, and I'm going to grab my feather, and I'm going to start this feather with the inside of the turn up. Quite a bit of twist there. There we go. And I'm going to start at the top of the post and just put one turn under the last. Try to tuck him in there. And five or six turns. Uh, yeah, I think that was five. Um, so once I've got that there, let me turn that a little bit, you can kind of see what I did. Um, now I want to tie this off. So I'm going to tie this off with a wrap going around the base of the wing post, a couple, three turns there. Um, so what I'll do here, and I think this is going to be a good angle for you, is I'm going to pick up my, my bobbin, and I'm going to come around the base between the peacock curl and the hackle, tying the feather off to the base of the wing post. A couple turns there. And then I can release my hackle pliers. Okay. Now as I get here, you can see my thread, get my angle right here for you, you can see my thread is coming out over the, uh, the hook eye. I'm just going to drop the thread down and come up and over. If I kind of clear this path, you can see. So this thread comes out, drops down around the hook eye, comes up and over, and it's now going around the hook shank again. And at this point, whoa, almost dropped my whip finisher. I'm going to come in with my whip finish, and I'll just sweep all this back. And you want to make sure that you clear all that hackle out of the way. If there's one strand, you will for sure catch it. Build my whip finish and pull it up from the bottom. And I can trim that thread out. I'll come in and trim the excess hackle feather. Right flush. Looking pretty good. We've got a couple couple crazy hackle fibers on this side we'll just get rid of. I don't like that one right there. Like so. So we've got a nice parallel hackle collar um, there on our parachute. I'm going to pull the wing up and trim it fairly short, about a third of a shank long. I'll come in and release the, the wire back here. Kind of prop the wing back up a bit. And then the last thing I'll do is I'm going to trim these legs. These back legs are going to be just a little bit longer than the wing and tail. And the front legs will be just a little longer than the hackle. You can see how they form an X along the bottom of the fly. And that, my friends, is a PMX. You can see sort of a complicated tying process. A lot going on in that fly. Um, there's, you know, there's several kind of parachute caddis patterns. Bloom caddis comes to mind. Uh, there's a, a couple different ones out there that uh, have got a parachute post and a hair wing. Um, and they're complicated to tie because you've got to clear the, the path for the parachute um, by getting that hair wing out of the way. And that little piece of lead wire is how you do that. So, um, at any rate, there's a PMX. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. We'll, uh, I see it said record the whole time, so I think I'm in good shape. And, uh, and now you know how to tie a PMX. So, anyway, there you go. I'm Charlie Craven. If you need any materials, you know we do have a full-fledged brick-and-mortar fly shop in Arvada, Colorado. And you can access all of our stuff online at charliesflybox.com. Uh, apparently, that's not been perfectly clear to everyone. But, yeah, if you need any materials, we have them. And we have a fantastic website that goes along with it that will uh, get you anything that you need. So, uh, there we go. Uh, if you have questions, give us a shout. Um, otherwise, keep watching. There's always going to be more. There's the PMX. You guys take care.